Everyone, oh good. Okay, let's start over one more time. Go go, double go! Hi everyone, welcome to my first ever live stream. I am so very happy to see all of you here, and thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate it. Any person, any human, I should say, really matters to me that you came by. Hi Dragoon, nineteen forty. I really hope I pronounced that right. So. Let's start with introductions. I had a costume poll between an angel, a devil, and a cat. And you all voted the most on a cat. So that is why I am technically a cat. Do you like my tail? It wags. And I have little cat ears and even cat slippers. Although you can't really see it. Introductions. I'm Kumakamoto. I'm 18 years old. I'm 124 centimeters, that's four feet, and my weight is a secret. My cup size is triple A. My languages are English and Japanese. My favorite anime would be The Rose of Versailles, Onisame, Kazito Kino Uta, the really old fashioned old school shoujo from the 70s. I also enjoy idol anime like Idol Master and AKB 0048. I do enjoy some horror though. Redo of Healer, Evangelion, and another, and of course, Sailor Moon, Card Captor Sakura, and Madoka, the Holy Bible. Cannot be without those. My favorite games are mostly love comedies, like Little Witch Games, Wizard Maker, but I also enjoy a lot of horror games. Things like Gore Screaming Show, Mugen Cairo 2, Euphoria, Fraternite, Maggot Bates, Minikui Mojika no Ko. Ah, well thank you for voting for the angel costume. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. If you want, Later I can do a little bit of a fashion show to show off the angel costume and the devil costume too. Why don't I do that now? Just hold on a moment please. How's that? Huh? Do you like my devil? Do you like my devil? Am I devilish? Am I very devilish? Huh? Well, I don't know if anybody really likes the devil look. I don't really consider it the best look, but I think it's rather cute. I can also do an angel look too. And then the fashion show will end and I'll go back to the normal cat costume. But I feel like because everybody voted, that everybody should get an opportunity to see the costume that they want. And this is the angel look. Huh? Very cute? Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, bear is a difficult language to learn. Most people think it's just growl and growling and snapping and scratching, but it's not, you know? Just like human. You know, human was a really difficult language for me to learn. Not just English. 
Alright, I think you all got a good look at the angel costume. Now I'm going to switch back to the cat costume. Cat costume, I can't forget. One moment. And we are back. All right. Thanks for tuning in for the little fashion show. I figure that everybody should get a chance to see their favorite outfit. So, despite how this looks, I am a cat. I am dressed as a cat. I can't do anything about my ears, you know? You humans have it so easy. You can just flatten your ears to the side of your head or wear, you know, animal ears on a headband. I can't do that. But trust me, I'm meant to be a cat. Meow, meow. Huh? See the little ears? Those are ears. Those are meant to be cat ears. All right. Uh, back to the introductions. Did I mention? This is important for later. I am a huge Clock Up fan. You may know some of their games have been translated into English. Euphoria, number one. Maggot Bates, room number nine. Although that's technically their BL branch, but they're all there. Let's see, the angel one next time. I can wear the angel one next time or next Halloween. You know, first for the first anniversary, I can always wear the angel costume next time. As I was saying, um, Clock Up, they do amazing games. Euphoria, Fraternite, Macabates, Air Juan, Michiko and Monica Nicole. Technically, that's a Nitro Plus game, but close enough, same artist, same sort of scenario writer, it fits. To me, it's a Clock Up game in my heart. Fratonite is actually not just, I feel like it's sort of the red-headed stepchild of the Clock Up family. It's never been translated in English, which is a crime. It has the darkest, most bittersweet ending I can possibly describe. I'm not going to, I'm not going to spoil it, but it has such a bittersweet ending. You really care about these characters. You cry about these characters. And I really, really hope it gets translated into English very soon, very soon. But the reason why I bring this up is because I am going to play room number nine at popular request for our stream. I originally had downloaded Akamanto, which is uh, like a 24-bit retro, like PS1 type of game in which you escape from a hooded creature. You're at a haunted school. Yes. But unfortunately, I couldn't actually get that to work on stream. I tried my best. I tried my very best, but I couldn't get it to work. So we are going to play room number nine instead. Oh, I think you guys should know, I'm also really into Otome games. Diabolic Lovers, if you're into vampires. Black Wolf Saga, if you're into just plain tragedy. Gekkari Ora no Romatsu, which is my favorite Otome game ever, and is unfortunately, tragically, a PlayStation Portable only game. Can you believe it? There's never been any sort of port, ever. And I cry about it every day. My goals as a VTuber, now I know these are pretty ridiculous, but it's good to dream big, because if you dream big, then hopefully they'll come true. I would like to have 20,000 YouTube subscribers by Christmas. Not just 1,000, 20,000. I would like to collaborate with Mochizuki Humari Senpai. You may know her as a more popular Japanese VTuber. She reviews a lot of eroge, and she's recently begun uh, collaborating with a lot of eroge companies. So I would love to be able to collaborate with her because it's so rare to find another girl who also loves eroge. It's so unusual, and I just really would love to meet a kindred spirit. Personally, I would also love to be an eroge scenario writer or an eroge heroine. I would love to be an Oroge heroine. Sign me up as the Loli Baba heroine with all the eight scenes. That is that. That is my goal. Or an Oroge scenario writer, as I mentioned. I actually do write in my spare time. I am a horror novelist, not to the quite level of Stephen King, but I do write quite a bit of horror. Maybe later 
I can read a little bit of my work, but it's rather dark, it's rather gory, and it's definitely not appropriate for kids, and I did not put an age restriction filter on this, and I don't want YouTube sound to ban me. So we'll see, maybe on another stream, I can read some of my work out loud. Mostly I write a lot of horror, tragedy, historical fiction, anything in 1700s France or 1950s America, that's up my alley. That's my bag. And lastly, my final goal is to be drawn by one of my favorite artists. Now, I know this is a pretty ridiculous goal, but this is a goal I hold dear in my heart. I would love to be drawn by Oyari Aishto, who does the art for Little Witch, or he used to do the art for Little Witch. Cole Kujimoto, who does the art for Digital Cute. Unfortunately, he's currently hospitalized at the moment, uh, so I hope he gets better soon. Or Fukumimi. Fukumimi also did the artwork for the Iris games. Shuki Shuki Daishiki, Naisho to Naisho, all those sorts of games. Oh, hold on. I didn't realize the chat was going. Thank you so much for everybody typing in. I really appreciate it. To me, if I have at least five viewers, that's more than I expected. Cause because I know... A lot of people are streaming at the time, especially around the holidays, so I appreciate every single view. It really makes a bear feel special. Now, I'm going to get going with room number nine, unless anybody has anything else to say, and here is just a generic warning. There is blood, there is gore, there is bisection of limbs, and, and non-con, and all sorts of unpleasant, icky things. I'm going to try my best to cut out the more adult scenes because this is a wholesome family friendly channel really 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 so let me get room number nine going debuts are rough debuts are rough they certainly are rough because i feel like i'm not building very much of a fort because it feels like i'm speaking to an empty room but i'm trying my very very best and i appreciate it so let's get room number nine going, so you all don't have to listen to me babble for much longer. I mean, unless you like to hear me babble, that's always fun. Now, I actually spoke with Manga Gamer, and they said I cannot show the entire route. Which is fine. I'll only show a partial route. Uh, I'm hoping for the stream to last one, maybe two hours. And if you all get tired of it, we can always pick another game. But that is what I'm going to do. So here we go. New game. Now, Clock Up is criminally underrated, if you ask me. They got their start at around 2011 with their release of Euphoria which, as you know, was their first real serious Edo game. It had plot, it had suspense, it had mystery, it had murder, it had everything. And then they sort of came out with a new series of more popular games. Like I said, Ratchetite, Ragged Base, Air Horn, uh, Natsu no Kusari, uh, Love and Cutthroat. All those games which are currently still being produced. But, I don't know. I feel like not only should they be translated more in English, that they should be uncensored, because I have actually run into people who are pro-censorship. I am not the bear for that. I am not pro-censorship. I am pro-artistic expression, as you can see, because I am a lowly. We are very lowly friendly here. Not just that, Kudo friendly too, Viona friendly, all of that. Sorry, <laughs> sorry for the babble. Let's go. Thank you, Gwen. Thank you for stopping by. <clears throat> Uh, thank you, Crypto, too. People who say that autumn comes in with the end of August are full of it. There are a few days left before the start of September, and though it felt like sunlight was getting a bit weaker, the heart of the city was still sweltering. Hot air blew out the back of AC units into the streets, and the asphalt underfoot radiated heat, but just made things worse. I was dying for summer to end. Isn't it cozy to read this? while it's freezing outside. I showered and everything, 
But after less than a minute, I was drenched in sweat. Why did I bother? Despite the scorching heat, I was out in front of the busy station again today. Suntan school kids trudged by in their summer uniforms. Even with the waves of people surging the turnstiles, I still spotted the person I was waiting for immediately. It wasn't as if anything about him particularly stood out, but I always had an act for picking him out of a crowd. This bookishly handsome, bespect, bespect, bespectacled fellow scanned the faces around him, looking for someone. He had just a bit of a slouch. His hair looked as soft as ever, gentle waves bouncing with his movements. Very heterosexual. After passing through the turnstile, he seemed to have spotted me and started walking towards me. Don't we all call our bros my sweet? Hey, bro. Hey, sweet bro. I pushed against the flow of the crowd to reach him and leapt into his arms. We haven't seen each other in ages. I mean, I can try and voice act the characters too if you want, but I can't really do a very deep voice. Kusso. What do I want to do? That's about the best I could do. But the day was sweltering, and I could feel how hot his body was against mine as we got sweat on each other. Again, super heterosexual. No tension here. He might be the master of the icy expression, but he's human underneath. If only he was really as cool as his face, he'd be the perfect summer accessory. I wasn't surprised that he didn't really smell like sweat. You know, Seiji's scent was a mix of some kind of subtle cologne and a faint <clears throat> and a faint whiff of cigarette smoke. By the way, I hope the sound level is okay. If it starts to be overpowering, please let me know so I can adjust it. Seiji might seem a little annoyed as I hugged him with all my might, but he didn't budge. I was the one who was totally dying in the heat. I could tell that the high school girls passing by were giving me a wide berth. I did feel a little proud when they glanced at Seiji and their eyes went wide. He sure is handsome, isn't he? Of course he is! He is my best friend for nothing! I love the way he talks. Yabai! Maji! Seiji pushed me off of him and began walking without so much as a glance back in my direction. Ice cold. But he wasn't wrong. Going someplace cool to talk was a better idea. The restaurant was dimly lit inside, even though it was still light out. There weren't a lot of tables either, which added to the cozy atmosphere. But it wasn't the sort of place we took dates. No, because you're definitely not on a date right now. That would be ridiculous. Men dating in a BL game? Totally ridiculous. That was where Seiji and I came to drink together. The usual server brought us menus when we sat down. I gave it a quick glance, but the offerings hadn't changed a whole lot since our last visit a few months earlier. I also love Clockup's photorealistic backgrounds. They tend to use just a filter over a photograph, but I really enjoy it. It gives it a more visceral, realistic sense, especially at the gory scenes. As I ordered, Seiji was looking over the specials on the wall. I like how they're just ordering everything on the menu. That also sounds really good. Just from a writing standpoint, the food is made to be really appetizing. Whoever did the scenario writing for room number nine did a fantastic job. He is so good at portraying different character developments, the despair, the self-hatred, the self-loathing, the eventual shame, humiliation, all of that. I love that. I love it when characters are humiliated and crying and miserable. I really enjoy that. Uh, I'm not a sadist though, I swear. And I didn't just mean his appetite for food. He'd never been voracious when it came to women either. Gee. 
Gee, I wonder, I wonder why. We've known each other since middle school, and well, he's probably been asked ten times more than I ever have out. To the best of my knowledge, he's had all of three actual girlfriends in the last decade. I'd always figured it was just how he was raised or something. I love their banter. I love their bickering. Seiji is my favorite character. I love the, the Kuzere types, the cool, icy men who you have to get to their heart. I love it. I especially love it even more when he's disheveled and crying and begging for mercy. You got the chicken with no sauce. That's not really much of an improvement. I didn't have to mention that I was leaving the vegetable dishes up to him. I could tell from his reply that he knew it too. We've known each other for ages after all. Seiji's mom is a great cook with a passion for nutrition. I was raised on cheap junk food, so all I took was a single bite of her cooking to blow me away. <laughs> I'm not gonna make I'm not gonna make an innuendo there. I'm not gonna make an innuendo there. But blowing him away. Even eating a lot of meals at the Azumi house didn't get rid of my soft spot for greasy fried chicken. Same. And grilled chicken slathered in sauce. Sometimes they do will eat that sort of thing too. He even says my basic fried rice is good. He's not really one for false flattery, so I think he really means it. That said, he really does have a much more refined palate than me, and he's much pickier too. He'll drink a little here and there, but he doesn't really have a taste for alcohol, so when he's just the two of us, Oolong tea is his drink of choice. Now me, I'm a fan of stuff like highballs, and I like getting wasted with friends, and I still don't understand the appeal of beer. Maybe it'll find a click when I'm an old man. Please don't turn into an old man. I mean, I would love all of this food. Please feed me. Please feed me. Uh, I'm the type to go all in on food first when I go out drinking. Whenever I go to a party with a set menu, the rice has always come out last. And it's never enough for me. When it's just me and Seiji, I can order whatever I like. Ah, he's so cute. You can't really see it. Hold on. Let me, let me move. Isn't he cute? Isn't he so cute? Well, I guess that's true. We can always order more. So what? You're going to be trapped in a hotel room and forced to do indecent things to each other. I don't know about you guys, but I'm, <laughs> I'm actually really enjoying myself. I really enjoy this game. Line. That's supposed to be uh, the copyright free equivalent of line. <laughs> Rude. She ditched him. I flopped down on the table. My cheek made a soft thunk as it hit the wood. Uh, Man. I do have to say, I have a nitpick with this translation. I do not appre appreciate swear words being inserted without any sort of reason into the translation. Swear words don't really exist too much, aside from <clears throat> genitalia words in Japanese. So I don't think unfucking believable isn't really called for here, in my opinion. But I'm not a translator. He's not even listening. He's so busy with the oolong tea. I couldn't tell you how many times I told him about getting dumped like this before. Back in the day, Seiji used to take it pretty seriously. 
but not so much anymore. Ha! Huh. You're getting serially dumped by women, huh? Because you hang out all the time with your male friend, huh? Huh? Gee, I wonder why. He just let out a mildly exasperated sigh and piled some of the salad that arrived with the drink onto my plate. That's a good friend. Just food therapy in small doses. Mountain of salad appeared on top of me, or <laughs> in front of me, with sea grapes balanced delicately on top. He didn't go easy on me. You're the one who's not gonna go easy on him. Okinawa. I feel your pain. I would love to go to Okinawa. It burns. Oh, nice CG. Uh, I don't know, like two days? It doesn't really matter, does it? You two are meant for each other. Look how they look at each other. Look at the tension in this CG. Two months? I told you, I told you guys too much. That's ridiculous. Ah, he's so unfeeling. I dated Sayama back in high school. Some of the guys called her Easy Yama <laughs> behind her back, but I still liked her. How would that translate? Sayama? Shimpuru Yama? Mm, maybe. I asked her out, we started dating, had sex, broke up in the span of a week. Well, less broke up and more she dumped me, really. It was her idea. I guess having sex right off the bat in our first week of dating was probably the wrong move. Or maybe everybody was right and all she wanted was to pop my cherry. I, I don't like that term. That was uh, six, six years ago? I couldn't help but wonder what she was doing now. Maybe she was happily married already. Probably too soon for that, huh? Exactly. The perfect man is right in front of you. Seiji did a completely different leap from me. I'm not hot enough to turn eight out of ten girls' heads as I walk down the street. And my personality's not exactly magnetic, either. I got no brains, no money, I don't even have a family, let alone a boastworthy father like Seiji. During the first summer break of middle school, my parents up and disappeared, making me an orphan with no relatives to speak of. Aww. He has a point. He has a good point. You're, you're too trusting. You're too trusting and you're too naive. Uh, no, I don't. I don't see you as a family man. I don't see you as the person to get married either. I don't, I don't see why. This narrative of having to get married and have kids is automatically the default. It doesn't have to be. But anyway, of course, that was the part that never worked out. Things never seemed to last long enough for some reason. For some reason. I always do my best to treat girls well, too. Well, I'm only 21. 21? That's older than me. Even I think that's pretty early to get married, but still, I really want to get married and have kids someday. You're really buying into this heteronormative narrative, aren't you? You know, this BGM is sort of catchy. Thing is, I don't really think Haruka intended to treat me badly. She probably just didn't think about it much and followed her desires. I mean, that's what made me want to date her in the first place. 
but like as much as I knew that still burned getting dumped sucks doesn't it just like getting ghosted it's just like don't dump me after I already paid an, an ass load of money actually I wonder if I can get my money back I'll probably charge a cancellation fee but I could probably just get something well getting dumped right before the trip was better than getting dumped right after I guess uh, no, this is fine. Even getting a little money back is better than nothing. I'm not tied down anymore, so I just gotta find another angel. All right, tonight we drink right in front of you. Right in front of you is your soulmate. Ah. Uh, He's so, he's so wholesome. He wants to be a school teacher. He wants to have a family. He wants to get married. He's so, he's, he's really wholesome and sweet. Even though he sort of gives like this uneducated bumpkin kind of vibe. Of course, that would mean the start of my days of paying back student loans too. But I don't know. It'll still probably be fine. I'll work hard. You can stay honest and positive. And you'd be surprised at what you can accomplish. Wise words, words to live by. I held my glass out to Seiji's and clinked up. I was so close to mispronouncing his name, Seiji, as, as something else, something inappropriate for the stream. <laughs> That's why we met up today in the first place, to celebrate Seiji passing the exam. He really is amazing. Totally platonic thing to say. His dad's a bureaucrat. His brother's a bureaucrat. He went to a good college himself and made, and made the, and made the hardest bowl civil servant exam seem like a breeze. Well, that's not giving him enough credit. He studied really hard, but I'd never be able to manage that, no matter how hard I studied. I always figured he was aiming to get into the civil service, and he would. He would have worked a little harder to get into the same college as his dad and brother. And I'm sure Seiji could have done it too, but... Well, I'm sure he had his reasons. Seiji actually got his test results a little while ago, but we decided to wait until I finished my exam before celebrating. A few months had passed since we last seen each other. I mean... Even after you pass the civil service exam, you still have to sit for interviews and take even more difficult specialized exam after that. So, actually getting an offer is still a long way off. My own exam results would be out in October. Hey, that's this month, October. <laughs> He's so laid back. Well... I had no doubt that Seiji would manage somehow. Me, on the other hand... Actually... Yes! Go together! Go together! Go together! I know exactly what happens and yet I'm still cheering. Why wouldn't you just give it to him for free? Taking another girlfriend had to be better than going with another dude. But, wait. Are, are these tickets even transferable? Did they even say anything about that? Should, should I just call and ask? <laughs> they broke up. <laughs> Saw that coming. His words were a matter of fact. Yes, they are very pretty. Oh, she dumped him? What? What? I wouldn't dump him. Wait, wait, hold up. Seriously? I found myself standing up, out of my chair, and leaning forward over the table. Of 
question marks were dancing around in my head. Admittedly, Seiji was always like this when delivering the news of a breakup. This was the third time, and as usual, he was the one who got dumped. I don't get women, especially the ones who dump Seiji. I, I don't either, I don't either. Handsome and smart, he was raised well, he's got a good personality, stable family, money, bright prospects for the future. He seems like a total catch to me. His best friend. Totally not boyfriend. I'm going to take a sip of water. Excuse me, I'm getting so thirsty off of these boys. Still thirsty, but a different way. So why did they always dump him? Oh, sorry, sorry about the notification. No, 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 not the right girl, not the right girl, the right, the right boy. I stuffed my face with the tomatoes on my plate as I repeated my usual refrain. I was sure Seiji would be able to find a smart, beautiful, and level-headed woman. Girls like that were never my type, though. Personally, I go for more laid-back girls. All I really want is an easy-going girl who loves me and sex. That is why you never find anyone to settle down with. You can't settle down with something, with someone, if, if they're just flighty like that. I chugged out my drink. Boy, did it feel good. Couldn't even remember how many I had anymore. Ah... But this really is the best. You really can't beat something cool and bubbly in the summer heat. Ah, he's drunk. Oh no, did I put him off? I, I love Daichi's voice actor. He does such a good job. Let's get married in Okinawa. Get married to each other. Exactly. No, no, come back. To a girl. Of course, of course you mean to a girl. You all can't see it, but I'm doing air quotations. Seiji gave a mild nod as he ate some of the grilled chicken. I flopped over on the table. Okay, seriously, why are you rushing so much into commitment? The whole point of commitment is that you know the person enough that you want to be together with them forever. It's not something that creates a bond. You need a bond beforehand, before you get married. Maybe I'll meet someone nice in Okinawa, like a nice local girl. Maybe I'll hit, hit it off with a chick who's there on vacation. Okinawa, summer, romantic, encounter. <laughs> now I'm really excited. Okinawa! August might be over, but summer, summer sure isn't. Come to think of it, this time next year, I'll be looking for a job. So I guess I won't be spending my summer on vacation like this then. I guess this would make this the last long summer vacation of my life. That's, that's depressing. That's depressing. <laughs> Two dudes chilling in a hot tub. Five feet apart because they're not gay. Yes, they are. The sun, the heat. It wasn't even noon yet, but the sweat 
was already gushing out of my pores. It felt so good. That sounds disgusting. Something about that made me kind of happy. Seiji stood next to me, puffing away on a cigarette as I stretched. No smoking in the airplane after all. Don't, don't play hard to get, don't play hard to get. I don't even know where to start. We got 10 days here. I know, I gotta get one thing out of the way first. He was being a bit of a wet blanket, but I wasn't about to let that bother me. The view from the airplane as we were landing was gorgeous. I had a better idea just as I was letting my excitement really get the better of me. Uh, ramen? Soba? Squid? I don't know. Soba! I was right! Is it? Ah, oh, whatever. Anything works for me. You better watch out, Okinawa! Okinawa's part of Japan. It sure is. He's so dumb. He's so dumb. I love him. Actually, to be honest, the dumb, the dumb, the dumb boys aren't really my type. I more prefer the quiet, laid back, stoic types like Seiji. So level headed. What a guy. You'll make a good husband, Seiji. A good husband to Daichi. <laughs> Hotel bus. Battle Royale vibes. Asking Seiji was always faster than taking out my phone to check. Well, really looking at his watch was the fastest, which is why I grabbed his arm as I spoke. Eleven, huh? Seiji pointed at the other end of the bus terminal with a cigarette. Ah, he's a smoker! He's a smoker, no! Several people... I want you guys to consider this! Several people were lined up behind the bus stop. Adults and children and guys our age. This is important for later. The first day, zero points. I will try my best to sound menacing. I don't, I don't know how well I'll do, but I'll try my best. This role re requires much gravitas in drama from the narrator. What? What? How long was I asleep? Huh? I opened my eyes. There was a light on the ceiling. It wasn't all that bright, though. Something wasn't right. I yawned and stretched, but I had no idea where I was. The hotel? Okinawa, I think. Wait, wh when did I fall asleep? Oh, good. I was a little relieved to see Seiji asleep next to me. I can't believe we fell asleep at the hotel. Were we really that tired? I remember getting on the bus and then... I guess we fell asleep on the bus? Did, did Seiji carry me up to my room? I was about to thank him when I realized something. I'm not a little kid. I couldn't imagine he could carry me like that. I was beginning to feel more awake. 
and as I did, the strangeness of the situation was starting to sink in. There was no way Sadie could have carried me to bed without waking me. I figured I should start with getting up. Pain shot through my head, and everything seemed slightly fuzzy and dizzy. What the hell is going on? Why is the bed a double? That's weird. I know I asked for twins. Sadie's a great dude and everything, but I figured sleeping in the same bed for ten nights is going to be rough. If I'm going to be sleeping with someone else, I'd rather do it with a girl. But even then, I decided on a twin suite because you never know how things might go. I mean, what if one of us caught a cold or something? I, I definitely didn't forget that. I could try asking for a futon. I, I guess I could call. Or maybe it might be better to go down to the front desk. I looked around the room. I could see the Okinawan landscape out the window. Sandy beaches, blue oceans. But it was still light out, but judging from the position of the sun, it must have been late afternoon. Huh? Something didn't seem quite right. I walked across the fluffy carpet over to the window. It was actually an LCD monitor displaying the world outside on its screen, not a window at all. I reached out to touch the window frame. The monitor was set deep into the massive window frame and wasn't about to budge. The screen was huge. I couldn't help wondering how much it must have cost. Sure it was expensive, but I, wa I want to see the real Okinawa. Well, maybe they do this for rooms that don't have a good view? Still, not having any windows is pretty suffocating. Ah, sleepy head, he's so cute. Seiji was no better off than I had been. He was completely lost when he woke up. tried to rub his eyes, and then made a face when he realized he still had his glasses on. That's right. He usually takes them off to sleep. <laughs> ah, this, this game is exactly for me. It's like a, like a saw, like a version of saw, or a more pain version of euphoria well actually i i hate the saw franchise i can't stand i can't stand gore like like uh live action gore live action special effects live action blood i can't stand it in in a video game it's okay but not live action i am a very sensitive bear you know i get very sensitive and very tender my heart is very delicate forced my sluggish body to move and grab the window frame. No matter how many times I tried to shift it, it wouldn't budge. I pointed and Sadie squinted from the edge of the bed where he was sitting. Sadie frowned at the monitor wedged tightly into the window frame and then gave the room a once over. His face relaxed a bit as he finished. Wondering why I followed his line of sight and saw our backpacks lined up against the wall. Totally forgotten about them. It didn't even occur to me. Sagey really is smart and he always remembers the things I forget. Sagey's first attempt at getting up made him stagger a bit. So he braced himself against the wall and stood slowly. Probably wanted to check them. 
I nodded. We moved away from the window, Seiji still supporting himself against the wall, and towards the door at the end of a short hallway. Um, I really do feel like I'm walking on clouds or something. Hmm, this is a weird feeling. Aphrodisiacs! Aphrodisiacs! <clears throat> Eventually we reached our bags. I opened mine since they were the closest. All of the items I packed according to the list Seiji had given me were where they belonged inside. Yeah, where's your phone? Smartphone is pretty much a necessity for everyone these days. You can rest easy in the knowledge that as long as you got your phone, you can always find your way. Not necessarily. <laughs> That's his first priority. I don't blame you. I did a double take. There was no signal. That is the true horror story here. Checking in the hotel and having no Wi-Fi whatsoever. That is the true horror story here. That has happened to me. This is the real, the real tragedy here. Didn't seem possible. I mean, I could understand if we were at an underground bar, but what kind of hotel has no cell service? What, were we out in the middle of nowhere? Is Okinawa the middle of nowhere? I, I guess it was off the tip of Japan. I never realized it was that far out there. Maybe I haven't been taking it very seriously, Okinawa. I'm sorry. I figured I should at least try connecting through Wi-Fi. If the signal's that bad, there had to at least be one open network, right? Nope. The networks that showed up on the list all had obscure-sounding names and seemingly meaningless alphanumeric strings. Not easy to say couldn't tell who was hosting them, and the security was tight, too. Not even a public hotspot, huh? What kind of a hotel is this? I heard Seiji click his tongue behind me. Personal hell? Uh, he gave the room another once over as he spoke, which made me realize I hadn't really given the rest of the place a very close look yet. The room felt like it belonged to a somewhat fancy hotel. It reminded me of places I'd stayed when I'd started to splurge a little. It always had twin beds, though. There was a set of stylish chairs and a table by the window. If only the window was real, it would have been amazing for a cup of coffee in the morning. The carpet seemed like it had been worn down a bit along the path from the room's entrance to the window. It's hard to imagine anything but a hotel. Seiji stood in front of the flat screen TV installed on the wall just like the fake window and turned it on. Good morning. The two of you have been selected for a behavioral analysis study. Please power on the tablet below didn't make any sense. Study? Seiji let out a serious sounding sigh as he stood there in front of the TV. What tablet? Oh, there was a charging stand under the TV with something like, with something that <laughs> looked like a tablet sitting on it. It looked kind of like the type you might see at a karaoke machine or order from at a restaurant or maybe even like a game console. It wasn't a particularly odd item, but for some reason it made me nervous. What would it do? Seiji picked the tablet up, and I leaned over to look over his shoulder. Good morning. You have been chosen to participate in a behavioral analysis study. Every day you will complete one task presented on the screen, and in return you will secure 10 points. A 
along with rations for three meals for the following day. 100 points are required to complete the study. What? I tilted my head, and my eyes settled on Seiji's fingers, touching the last sentence on the screen. We ask for your cooperation in this study. The moment he highlighted the link, the screen went blank, and then both the tablet and the TV started displaying the same thing. It was a shot of a man in a small room. He was holding something metallic. A kettle? Over his head. Oh, a loud metallic thunk followed. I couldn't see any damage on the wall. No, on the door, through the surveillance footage. Yabai! Yabai, John! Erosiki, John! The man in his underwear shouted. Cold mechanical text appeared on the screen as the man slammed the kettle down over and over. If you take any action to disrupt the study, you may be subject to a point penalty and or a meal ration to have earned, maybe withheld. It was a line from the same set of instructions earlier. The screen went blank before the footage came up again. It was a shot at the same place, with a person slumped up against the wall. Probably the same man from before. I, I appreciate the seriousness of the situation and, and the gravity of the circumstances they're in. But this just makes me really happy. I love dark, serious circumstances in fiction. Nothing makes me happier than to see other characters suffer. In, in fiction. Fiction. Fiction only. Food and other supplies will not be replenished if the door to the exchange chamber is open or a subject is inside. The way the instructions continued to pop up made it seem almost as if the video was ignoring the man's frail voice as he begged. Oh, he's an older man. Several days passed between cuts. The man looked haggard and weak. Why doesn't he just leave the chamber? He could just leave the chamber. For is he locked in? He must be locked in. It, it must be so that he, it locks automatically if you're in there for any longer amount of time than like a couple minutes. This rule cannot be broken, even if a subject's life is at risk. Ma'am, what the hell is this? <gasps> oh, oh, he's dead. He's dead. Look at that. Look, he's dead. He's dead. For smooth delivery, we request your cooperation in staying out of the exchange chamber and keeping the door shut, except when retrieving items. He's not dead, is he? That not possible, right? Oh. The, the scene changed. For a moment, I was relieved, since I'd been expected to see a rotting corpse. But it quickly became obvious that there was nothing to be relieved about. I mean... Speak for yourself. I, I find it kind of hot. Edoijan. The man wearing a wife beater, who looked a few years older than us, was straddling a man of about high school age and strangling him. Wake up. Wake up. Oh, Let's just take a moment to appreciate the CG. The man being strangled didn't resist. Or maybe he couldn't. His hands were behind his back. Were they bound? Not a pretty face. Yeah. 
whoa, holy shit, he's really gonna die. Was it just acting? Was it kind of special effect? I've never seen someone's face change colors like that before. Oh my gosh. The man roared as he continued to strangle the throat of the limp man beneath him. The researchers will not interfere in conflict between participants. He kept squeezing tighter and tighter, almost like he was trying to snap the other man's neck. And then his voice abruptly stopped as the video cut off. We requested cooperation in the study. You know what? I will gladly sign up for this. Hold on. Hold on a moment. Let me fix this. Let me fix this real quick. One moment. Just, just put me and Seiji in together. I will be happy to do whatever you want me to do to Seiji. Let me do it. Sign me up. Put me in the killer hotel room. I will gladly do whatever you want to Seiji. I mean, why not? It's not a prank. It's not a prank, bro. I noticed the tension in the muscles of Seiji's neck and clapped him on the shoulder. No, no, it's not. No, it's not. It's not a prank. Ah, this is what I was talking about. Remember? Remember who was on the bus originally? Parents, children, other men. I thought about it for a moment, but all I could do was shake my head. This was all way beyond some prank. His quiet words chilled my heart. Once the video ended, the TV and the tablet both displayed text again. The video didn't look fake. It really looked like the guy died. But it couldn't be real. Seiji's attention shifted back to the tablet. As I stood there trembling, he touched one of the items on the menu. Oh wait, same though? Same though? <laughs> yes, exactly, same. You wanna join me with Seiji? Sure. Uh, it was getting harder and harder to wrap my head around what was going on. Almost like how a smooth piece of ice will slip away as you try to grasp it, leaving nothing but the sting of cold behind. Really lovely phrasing there. Really great similes. Did these people have any concern for their subject's human rights? No. No. Why, why would you say that? No, of course not. Evil people? The hairs on the back of my neck were standing straight on end. The whole situation felt increasingly surreal, or er, unreal, unreal. <laughs> ah, tools. Oh, hold on a minute. Something with chat. Calm down. The yeah, other goes for you too, chat. Calm down. Now I'm not mad though. I'm just joking. Maybe you should finish that thought. You're so thirsty. Actually, I'm thirsty. Hold on a moment. All right. He forced a slight smile. Aw, he's so sweet. Aw, you guys have to see his smile. Look, look, look at his smile. Look at his cute smile. I felt like, I felt like I was about to be overcome with fear, not knowing what might happen to us. But hearing Seiji say that gave me just enough, just barely enough courage to keep myself together. 
working on plan sets. Well, yeah, I mean, it's the instructions as to how to survive. You should be reading it. Maybe we shouldn't have looked at it. Yeah. Conclusion of the study. The study will conclude if the subject requests to end the study after collecting the requisite number of points or in the event of the subject's death. After the study is over, your personal effects and any compensation the researchers deem applicable will be delivered to your desired point of return. You may designate your desired point of return in the settings section in the settings section and the menu on the left. The default point of return is home or near home. He was tense. The situation was getting even to the ever calm Seiji. It looked like it had information on how to end the study, but we all know how to end the study is to kill the other person. In the event of a subject's death, the number of living subjects in the test chamber falls below two individuals, the study will end. Further, you may decide, decide in advance the method by which your remains will be disposed of in the event of your death. Well, that's super cheerful. I picked the greatest story for Halloween. I mean, I'm sad I didn't get to play Akamato, but this is a pretty good second, right? Personally, if it was me, just take me home. Just drop me off home. Internment on private land after cremation? No way. Uh-uh, no way. Cremation? So everybody just thinks you're missing forever? That sounds horrible. Your family would never know where you had gone. At least put me in a coffin, my God. Uh, he's he's optimistic. How stupid and and sweet, but also stupid. Delivery of items. You all can read that for yourself. Is that why the door won't open? Seiji ran his finger along each line of text. Ever since middle school, he had a habit of doing that when he was studying. I heard rumors that watching his long fingers run along the page drove all the girls crazy. Well, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Can you blame them? Shit, I think I was daydreaming a little. <laughs> I could practically, practically see the two of us in our old school uniforms. What is wrong with me? The flip side is that we don't play along. We're dead. Wallow in your own filth. Wallow in your own filth. Yeah, I mean, I, I would like, I would like to see that, sir. Sorry, my expression is inappropriately cheerful. But like I said, these sort of dark things in a game make me happy. So that's probably why I'm smiling so much. Also, thanks for hanging in there, chat. Thank you. I really appreciate it. It's not really much consolation. Sage, you definitely manipulated the tablet with his long fingers. It was almost funny in a strange way, like it didn't just feel real, like an out-of-body experience. None of it made any sense. My brain might as well have been replaced with cotton stuffing. But it was real, and my desire to laugh was probably just an attempt to distance myself from reality. Like, you know, when you watch a movie or read a comic book, something breaks your suspension of disbelief, and you're like, yeah, right, that would never happen, right? If you were tossed into one of those worlds and told, okay, you're the protagonist now, I'm pretty sure you'd just be at a total loss, too. Seiji didn't say a word, but I could tell that his intent expression in his mind was spinning at immense speed. The 
TV was displaying some kind of diagram thing. What? There are other rooms like this one? Twelve of them? That many? Twelve rooms, and ours was room number nine. Title drop, mic drop, roll credits. I can see the two of us in the feed next to room number nine's entry. I tried waving my hand over my head, but all I saw on screen was me looking in the wrong direction with a slightly tense look on my face. Oh, that's creepy. The camera, the camera isn't even facing him. It's facing the other way. There are multiple cameras hidden in this room. Whoa. Guess that means they're always watching us. Really drives the study thing home. There were buttons with the word make a public. Oh, make public on them at the top of the screen too. Talk about bad taste. Don't insult my taste. Don't insult my taste. Well, I don't know what I was feeling exactly, but whatever it was, it was well past anger. Beiji touched the tablet again. There were two check boxes with choices lined up next to each. Ah, ah, ah! All right, I may, I may have to fast forward soon. Task one, subject B must draw 600 milliliters of blood from subject A. Task two, subject A must, <laughs> must extract stuff from semen B, or fuck, ah! Subject B, subject B, subject B! All I can manage was a couple of dumbstruck words. This is extremely poor taste. Maybe, maybe so. Don't shame, don't shame here. Whoops. Sorry. I'm not sorry. <laughs> I don't want to give them blood or semen, goddammit. My voice sounded pretty meek. Let me, let me make sure that I don't have to fast forward. Hold on. Uh, no, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. Which meant our clocks hadn't been tampered with and it was about six hours since we'd arrived in Okinawa. Have we really been out for that long? Seiji rubbed his temples. I can't blame you either. Ugh, you could cut the tension in here with a knife. Seiji seemed to be feeling the same way and closed the task screen. While I bought a new backpack just for this trip, Seiji had brought one he'd had for a while. It looked pretty expensive too. I imagine the difference in comfort and durability between our bags was pretty significant. Thinking about trivial things like that made me feel a little better somehow. The contents of his bag were neatly organized. I just crammed things into mine pretty thoughtlessly, but CG had his things sorted into little bags by category, like underwear or sunscreen. That's CG for you. Yeah, let's just act like everything's normal. That'll work out. Denial always works out. The bathroom was almost too clean. The halls weren't the the walls weren't the usual, like plastic you see in unit baths, but stone. It looked like marble. It seemed like a pretty nice room, like a step above anything I'd ever booked. 
get ready for this bathroom because this is the only change of scenery you ever get. There were bottles of shampoo, conditioner, and body wash in the shower, combs and razors on the massive counter, all sorts of other stuff. The packaging all looked well designed and expensive, not like the dollar store looking stuff you might find in a business hotel or a love hotel. I wasn't convinced any of the improvements were worth the cats, though. I'm cool with normal. I'm cool. Give me my dollar store soap and let us out of here. The closet next to the bed was pretty big. It had hangers, a basic shoe shine kit, bathrobes, even a trouser pressed in it. What's the point of giving us that sort of thing if you're going to lock us up in here? Does that mean you're going to make us play dress up or something? Maybe so. Maybe so. There was a laundry hamper and even extra towels and sheets, not to mention the extra blankets and pillows. And then there was that area Seiji must have been fiddling with earlier, the exchange chamber, the one from the video. I tried opening the door, but it didn't even budge. It just coldly displayed the phrase, currently locked. I want to experience the real ocean, not a video of it. If this were some kind of escape room game, <laughs> Euphoria references. If this were just some, some sort of escape room game, they'd probably be hence hidden in the room, but whoever put this room together didn't seem like the careless type. Even after we'd gone over every inch of the place with a fine tooth comb, there was nothing even resembling a clue. It felt like we could stave off terror and the like that way by not thinking about the study. Like shoving something back into the deep recesses of your mind so that you can forget it even exists. Oh, well, at least they have free soda in your hell study. Free soda, that makes everything worth it. There was a variety of different drinks in the refrigerator, including bottled water. There were several mini bottles of alcohol in the mini bar corner. I mean, might as, might as well. Might as well. You're trapped there. Oh, did you all hear that? Did you hear that? I'll do it one more time. Like hell I will. The wall shook. Someone in the neighboring room must have hit it with all their might. I could hear the sound of something breaking reverberate through the wall, and I froze just as I was able to twist the top off of a bottle. My heart was practically pounding out of my chest. I glanced over at Seiji. He was looking at me without saying a word. There was a woman screaming too. Whatever was going on over there sounded pretty violent. The sound seemed distant, yet heavy enough that I could faintly feel the vibration. A red ex exclamation mark appeared by room number 10. Whining! Penalties will be leveled against participants who damaged the facilities. If you all have all seen the Battle Royale movie, do you remember the really cheerful girl who delivered the horrific instructions? That's me. I'm meant to be the really cheerful girl delivering the horrific instructions. They must have destroyed a window or a door or something. That meant the people who locked us in here would be responding. They'd be able to sense our movements or hear footsteps running down the hall or something. The vibration from someone hurling a large object against the wall or door continued for a while, but then came to a sudden stop. So did the screams. Everything stopped. Only the sound of the electronic chime remained. Why did everything stop? And how? I was unsettled by how the room next door had gone silent, almost as if it had been suddenly emptied. 
I waited with bated breath as the TV started to display a message. Escape from the testing chamber is effectively impossible. Please focus your efforts on the study. That would probably be best. I couldn't even crack a joke. The instant had shattered what little sense of normalcy we'd managed to regain. No matter what situation you're in, you still get hungry. You need calories whether you're facing reality or running from it. Very true. I... I fudged around with the mini bar on top of the refrigerator. I had the bottle of tea I brought from the airport, but if we really were locked in here, if we really were going to have to stay here for an extended period of time, we'd need to get used to the idea of eating the food they gave us. Did they drug the food? I bet they drug the food. I bet they drug the food. The water was nearly boiling already. There was something just so strange about the normalcy of the hotel room, aside from the fact that we were locked inside it. Oh, it was the same kind of electric kettle that old man had in the video. Let's not go there. In the end, I chose a green tea, filling the little teapot with the delicate leaves as the water came off the boil and cooled enough for me to add it. Personally, I'm not a fan of green tea. It's too bitter for me. I carefully placed two teacups and some sweets onto a tray, carrying it over to the table by the window. I sat down and took a sip. At least they gave you dessert, right? That makes it worth it, right? The hot tea felt refreshing in my mouth and the flavor seemed to permeate my entire body. There was something comforting about it. I wonder how long I should wait between sips to check if it's poison, though. You probably should have checked before, before, you, before you drank it, you know? Maybe I should ask Seiji not to eat or drink anything for a little bit. No, there's no point. If they wanted to kill us, we'd be dead already. Though, I guess it could be some kind of non-lethal poison, too. You know, like punishment for the idiot who carelessly stuffed his face with food and drink of unknown origin. Like you, like you yourself, Daichi. Actually, if I end up dead first, I guess they'll have to let, they'll have to let Seiji go. Despite the circumstances, Seiji wasn't about to forget his manners. Well, I guess the people who made those snacks didn't do anything wrong. The purple yam tarts were quin qu quintessentially Osakan desserts. They probably even sell them at the airport. Their presence in the room was just another almost unsettlingly normal hotel move. It just made everything feel infuriatingly calculated. Seiji didn't hesitate to take a bite of one of the tarts or the tea to drink which served to confirm my take on the situation. I picked up one of the individually wrapped confections myself and took a bite. Yeah, it's good. There's just something about sweets that makes your nuts zip of hot tea that much more delicious. I'm more of a coffee person, personally. Maybe Okinawa is just that far out in the middle of nowhere but if we were above ground, we should be able to hear the ocean or the cicadas or something, right? Right? I don't know. His socks were inside out. That's so creepy. They went through their luggage. I know that's the smallest thing that should be worried over, but they went through their luggage and turned his socks inside out. Oh, 
they messed with the socks, but they kept the pocket knife, huh? Probably want him to use the pocket knife. Oh, whoops, sorry. You'd never know it from his face, but I guess he really was looking forward to it, huh? Aw, that's sweet. He was he was so looking forward to it, and look what happened. Ah, sorry. Sorry about the notice. I budgeted about... 5,000 yen for it, but since I probably wasn't going on any other vacations anytime soon, I ended up grabbing a cheap, collapsible, collapsible bag that I could use every day. I'm going to take a five-minute break, and then I'll be back. I just want to get some water and freshen up a bit. But you all enjoy. I will be back, and thank you very much for watching so far. Five-minute intermission!
we are back. Thank you so much for hanging in there. So I just wanted to check in on chat before I continue. How are you doing, chat? Are you doing okay? I, I see we have a handful of people still watching. Thank you so much for putting up with my very boring babbling. But I, I am trying my very best. I am a little nervous because this is my first stream ever. And just for me to figure out the technology is a huge step for me. So how are you doing, chat? Are you doing okay? Huh? Huh? All right. Doing okay. Thank you. Thank you for letting me know. All right. So I assume you all have your snacks. You all have your water. Let's get going. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's so good to be back. I was actually, I was shaking. I was shaking when I first started. I was shaking because I was so nervous and my hand was sweating and I felt so gross. But I'm really glad that you guys are hanging in there and being such good sports. Thank you so much for being such wonderful honey buns. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm going to play a little more up until the second, or, or maybe the first, up until the first major scene. Up until the blood drawing scene, I'll play up to. I cannot show you any of the, ahem, <clears throat> any of those scenes. Ah, you no scene. Ah, no, ero no scene. Mise de, dame da yo. All right, back to it. Let me get the window, here we go. I budgeted about 5,000 yen for it, but since I probably wasn't going on any other vacations anytime soon, I ended up dra grabbing a cheap collapsible bag that I could use every day. Not sad, I wanted to make sure to pick one that wouldn't look too shabby next to Seiji. I was pretty happy with my choice. Where you go? Shopping for everything had been a lot of fun. I'm the same way. I love to shop. It's a hobby of mine. Although, lately with the virus and being inside, I mostly just been net shopping, but it's still fun just to browse, you know? Although, it sort of lacks that human contact, or in my case, the bear-to-bear -bear contact. I mean, I know a lot of people say that the fun part of travel is the lead up to the trip. I'm pretty sure this isn't why. What if this whole study thing is just bullshit? You just saw somebody die. You saw two different people die. To what end? Just to mess with you. Again, somebody took a lot of liberties with the swear words in this game. I don't, I don't really appreciate it. I know it adds color and flavor, but it's not my favorite thing just for this translation. I don't know. I feel like it could have been gone through one more edit, one more round of editing. But even if everything we've experienced so far in that video were somehow fabrications, just this room would have been ludicrously expensive. We were probably underground and the walls were thick. On top of that, there were furnishings, the massive bed, the LCD panels, the TV. But there was only one bed! What are they going to do on the bed? The, the shower had a bathroom and... Oh... <laughs> <laughs> the room, the room had a bathroom and a shower too, which meant it had water and sewage connection and a water heater. The fittings were expensive looking as well. How many years of my soon to be salary would it take to build a room like this? Shook my head. I could have unknowingly slept with a girl who had a boyfriend or something. I'm pretty sure if it was something like that, the guy would probably just jump me in the street and not resort to kidnapping. But this is more fun, though. At the very least, 
I can't think of someone I could have pissed off enough who would have had the money to pull this off. What about me? Would any of Koya and Zenda be fine with this? But where are these home offices? I hated going there, but his dad was the richest, most connected person I could think of. Daisy's dad was a bureaucrat and seemed to be pretty high up in the ranks. I'd never really asked about the specifics, but I knew it was one of the reasons people treated Seiji differently. Though I guess even though I'd describe his family as rich, it wasn't as though he were they were multi-millionaires or lived in some giant mansion or anything. <laughs> International intrigue? This is not a spy thriller. Exactly! This isn't a spy movie! Good point. <laughs> Real nasty dudes who are doing this for fun. That That's me. That's me. I, I am the nasty dude. It is me. It's me. Put it like that, it sounded ludicrous and unrealistic, but at least it had a surreal logic to it. It's pretty much the only explanation. Seiji sipped his tea again and started responding. I did the same. You might have been in the middle of a crisis, but that didn't stop my body from getting thirsty. Didn't stop you from getting thirsty? <laughs> but, but what if they drugged the drink? I think they drugged the... The drink of the food. And the water. And the water, too. All the possibilities running through my mind sent chills down my spine. Talk about terrifying. I'm sorry, CG. I didn't have parents or siblings. Well... At least not anyone I could introduce to someone as my mom or dad. Who knows where the hell they are. I can't believe they just ditched him when he was in middle school. They just up and left. That's horrible. The only worthwhile thing my parents ever gave me was my good health. I owed the person I'd grown to be to the people running the orphanage, my teachers, and of course, my best friend. Ah, oh, just kiss already. Wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. Don't, don't kiss Daichi. I, I am here. I volunteer. Where is this coming from? You guys flirt all the time. That is your only dialogue. That's it. It's, connect it's connected to the drug trial. It must be. His beautiful eyes. Shouldn't do stuff like that. It's kind of too late. Mm -hmm. Seiji leaned back and sank deep into a seat before letting out a sigh. Oh, he feels guilty because he involved him. Yep. It, it's, I mean, it's not really your fault. You didn't really do anything, but it just sort of happened that you two were together and you both got kidnapped. Really, it should have been me and Haruka here, but... But I, I don't want to see that. I want to see you and Se Seiji. I should have just been an adult and canceled the tickets. If I had just eaten the cancellation fee, none of this would have happened. My chest ached. It felt like someone had their hands wrapped around my stomach and my heart, and I was getting tunnel vision. 
Oh man, wouldn't it be a plot twist if Daichi did invite Seiji knowing, knowing that this was going to happen? I know that's not how it goes down, but wouldn't that have been, wouldn't that have been great? No, of course not. I shook my head. My vision started to get a little bleary. Did they mean blurry here? A little blurry? Bleary just means like tired or exhausted. But your vision wouldn't get exhausted. It would get blurry. Oh well. Daisy didn't seem particularly concerned by my silence as he carefully folded up the discarded wrappers on the table and got up to throw them away. No, I definitely would have just crushed them into a ball. Or if I was lazy, I might have even just left them on the table. The conclusion of the study. 100 points. It was written right at the top in big bold letters, like it was trying to tell us to work hard and make that goal. Gambare, futari tomo. Etchi na kato, suru yo. Shite yo. Why is that your first thought? Your life is threatened. Why is that your first thought? You're so dumb. Food? Yes, good. Think about the food. Don't think about the other thing. get a carton of a favorite brand of cigarettes or a brand of black tea. All the descriptions were just like, contact us for more information, which is kind of, I mean, like, who would want to ask their kidnappers for favors? Me. If it was me, I'd be like, hey, I want this brand of snacks. I want this brand of soda. I want these books. Give them to me. Like, why not? They're the ones inconveniencing you. Ask for whatever you want. They were also offering a non-specific set of pajamas. Well, they don't even have pajamas? That sucks. Ooh, game consoles, game consoles. Get a Switch, get a Nintendo Switch. Get a Switch and play Otome games. The list made it sound like one point was worth around 10,000 yen. If your average new game is somewhere between 5,000 and 8,000 yen, I guess they must keep the rest of some kind of handling fee. If we get 10 points per task, that would be about 100,000 yen as a task. Everything else needed to be on a request basis where they would offer a point cost estimate. The contradiction between the almost warmth and detached coldness was unsettling. What the hell were they thinking when they wrote this stuff? Why? Why why do you care why do you care about the television? Why do you care about the television at this point? Are we at like zero points? We have nothing. Plus, if you want to get a hundred, we should treat them as an extremely precious commodity coming from the guy who just wanted to watch pornography. If we focus exclusively on getting 100 points, we'll have to carry out 10 of their tasks to get there, but if we spend even one point, that immediately bumps it up to 11. While well, I was lost in thought, the data overview screen appeared. I get it. This way we'll have a surplus of three points to work with. I should probably read through all the rules, too. I mean, I'm going to have plenty of free times on my... Blah, 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 blah. I can't talk. I am a bear. I'm very little brain. I mean, I'm going to have plenty of free time on my hands without even TV to watch. 
Oh my god. Why why is that you? Oh my Oh my gosh. It's it's not important right now. Exactly. At least that way you can hear if like there's a news report on whether you went missing or something. Let's see. Three, two, two, two occupants. Two occupants, two occupants. Number two. They've, only, they've been here for 21 days and only had 41 point, 48 points. There were two people in room number six. Seven days, 71 points. Number eight had three people and they had three points. Oh no. Oh no, you know what? I think that was the family. The mother, the father, and, and the daughter. I think it was the family. The family with the kid. Oh no. Mm -hmm. On the same bus. You said it. The foreshadowing is there. I can only kind of remember now that my head had cleared a little, but that was just before we got on the bus. I'm pretty sure I saw a couple with the kid. Why did I tell you? I don't want to think about it anymore. I don't want to think about a mom and a dad and their probably elementary school aged son ending up in a place like this. I, I want to see it. I want to see what kind of tasks they have. I wish we could see the other rooms too. I'm interested. I want to see what else they, what else, what other, <laughs> what other tortures they have to do. There had been other people there, like that group of four people about our age. Two kind of easy looking girls and a couple of guys who looked like they spent a lot of time out on group dates. They got on the same bus. They were all lined up at the stop before us. And they were making such a ruckus on the bus. Honestly, it was embarrassing, especially with how well-behaved the little kid was. If they got knocked out with some kind of gas on the bus, there was a good chance the other passengers were here too. They're dead. That's, they're, they're dead, they're gonna die. Why? Why are you so hung up on it? Don't think about it, my gosh. Are you sure you want to use your points? Click yes. If I was trapped in a, in a, you know, in a, in a fucker die scenario, to, sorry, sorry to be crude, but that's the only word for it. If I was trapped in that sort of scenario where it's really desperate, television would not be my first choice. I would save it for food or something. The TV flashed off for a moment for a green volume bar appeared at the bottom of the screen, followed by a boisterous TV show. Could still be a recording. He's right. Seiji's right. Technically, technically. Slow news day, just a normal peaceful day put me in a weirdly relaxed mood. It was almost like we really were just lazing around a normal hotel. But this was no hotel. I gazed over at Seiji. He was looking back at me through his glasses. I didn't have anything else to do once I got my clothes sorted, so I decided to lay down on the bed again to relax a little. You know, I want to get to the blood drawing scene already. This is taking a really long time. Would you guys mind if I fast forward it a little bit? Just to the blood drawing scene? Would you mind? Would you mind terribly? 
Just a little. Just a little. Okay, he's showering. The TV turned off. See, he was fiddling with the tablet, so he must have done it. I was a little worried about the points and stuff. I mean, would it still let us watch the next time he turned the TV on? Thought I could hear something. Clink, clink sound was coming for the exchange chamber. Like some items were being set down. You probably wouldn't be able to hear it if you were concentrating on the TV. And the walls must have been pretty thick. Just how much chaos was going down in room number 10 then? Dinner has been delivered. You may now enter the exchange chamber. And with that, there was a metallic click. The door now displayed the word unlocked. Steak! Steak! That's my one of my favorite foods! I want the steak. Give me the steak. Let's see. You don't want to die of starvation? I understand. Thanks, chat, for letting me know it's okay. Which room was it again? Six or seven? The one working really hard to get to a hundred. Maybe it was best to follow their lead. Oh, that, that's cute. They spilled tart with an E. You don't you don't really have a choice, do you? Oh good, finally. Which one which one should we do? Subject A drawing blood from subject B? Or subject B, making subject A ejaculate. Subject A was me, and subject B was Seiji. Meaning I would be giving up blood, Seiji would be giving up semen. How did they even come up with the stuff? I mean, I love Seiji, but not like that. I didn't want that kind of relationship with him either. Going with the blood make more sense. Sure you don't. Sure you don't. 600 milliliters? I don't know how much that is. A, a pint? No, it can't be a pint. Half a pint? Well, they gave you... Oh, oh, that's why they gave him steak. Iron, iron in the steak. So he, so he could give the blood to give him iron. He was never one to put up a front. If he has something to say, he'll say it. But if he doesn't voice an opinion, it's because he's still not sure of it. Two liters. I hate, I hate needles. I, I personally, I hate needles. I hate vaccinations. Uh, but get your COVID shot. Get your COVID shot. But I personally, uh, I, I get so scared of with needles and, and pointing objects. I wouldn't be able to hack it. It's a bit more than a pint. Thank you. When I think a pint, I think like a pint of ice cream. Like, that's a huge container, if you think about it. And they just want to fill it up with blood? I mean, that sounds horrific. But that's why I'm here, because I love that sort of stuff. They gave us detailed instructions. That's good. Wait, I didn't even choose one. I didn't even, I didn't even choose between, between option A or option B, and they just went ahead and chose for me. What? I, I didn't even get to choose option 
option two. I wanted to choose task two, and they didn't even let me choose it. What? What? What is that? No. Instructions for drawing blood. The instructions were a lot more detailed than I'd expected. I guess the rules did say they provide instructions and tools to the best of their abilities. I, I love this. I love that they give them these sordid, horrible, messed up tasks for them. And then they give, they give these really clinical instructions. It's part of the fun, for me at least. The instructions included a note saying that a healthy adult man shouldn't be affected by losing 600 milliliters of blood. I guess they only take 400 during donations to be safe. We had no internet access, so it wasn't like we could just check if it was accurate, but just having any information at all was a little reassuring. <laughs> rip, rip extra, <laughs> rip, rip extraction, exactly, exactly, I wanted that option, that was the option I wanted, they didn't even give me that choice, what is that? They even included a video with, oh, they included the video, well that's nice, that's nice, does that mean they include a video with the other option? You can do it, yeah, you can do it. Look at his face. Oh, you can't really see his face, but he looks very determined. I always knew I was safe in Sagey's hands. Just getting married already. My gosh! All the things we need for drawing blood were sitting right where I'd set our trays of food. This new tray was made of silvery metal. It would have looked at home in a hospital. Okay. Now, now chat, behave yourselves, chat. This is, this is not an erotic scene, okay? This is not meant to be an erotic scene. This is a harrowing, horrific, terrible scene with terrible things happening. Don't get too excited. This, this is purely platonic, nothing fetishistic, medically fetishistic about this. You don't want to screw it up. I, I certainly hope not. My God, they're stabbing you in the vein with a needle. Have you ever been stabbed with a needle, chat? I have, and my veins were so small, they couldn't do it. They, they, they tried three times in the hand, and they couldn't do it. My hands were too small. They had to do it in the elbow, so I got stabbed four times. I hate needles. It didn't occur to me that we didn't have any of the machinery used in blood do donations. There was a long tube on the tray, though. Mm, kind of looked like an IV in reverse. It even had a device partway along the tube to control the flow. The kind of thing that could be fiddled with to speed up or slow an IV drip. Yeah, I also hate IV drips. They're no fun. At all. Finally, Seiji set the tablet down and grabbed the arm pillow and placed it on the bed patting it to beckon me over. Okay, chat. Be careful. Be careful, chat. I'm giving you warnings. There's going to be blood and, and needles and pointy stuff and maybe a little bit of kudo and uriona and all that sort of stuff, which personally I'm kind of into, but you might not like it, so look away. Cover your delicate eyes, chat. Actually, you know what? If you're that delicate, why are you even here? This is not... This is not the game for you. In your left, I showed it to him as he gently ran his fingers over the inside of my elbow. <laughs> that sounds so painful. Left arm, huh? Uh, I guess it's easier to see the veins on that one. Kind of weird to think about it, though. Which arm has more prominent veins? Seiji pulled a chair up to the side of the bed, set the tray on the nightstand, and even repositioned the trash can nearby before vanishing into the bathroom. 
I immediately heard the sound of running water. Oh, he's washing his hands. He's very conscientious. The wait made me even more anxious and more nervous. Seiji must have been even more nervous, though. I mean, he wasn't a doctor or a nurse, but he had to stick a needle in someone's arm. Yeah, that would terrify me. I, I don't, probably having the needle stuck in would be more terrifying, but having to stick it in also sounds horrific. Oh. I'm sorry, Dragoon 1940, that sucks. Ripperino, Ripperino indeed, that sucks, I'm sorry. I hope you feel better. Get a Band-Aid. My heart ached and my stomach was squirming so much I thought I might puke up all the steak I just ate. No, that's such a waste, that's such a waste of good steak. Seiji looked so intelligent and calm as he concentrated <laughs> as he concentrated intently on the task at hand. His face could have almost been a still from a movie. What kind of movie? He disinfected his thoroughly washed hands and put on a pair of gloves. Okay. I'm gonna get started. Okay, chat. Here we go. Here we go, chat. Th this is kind of hard. I I'm not gonna lie. If you look in the gallery, if you look in the gallery you want to complete this game, they have this scene along with all the erotic scenes. So I guess this would loosely be considered an erotic scene, even though there's no nudity. Please don't ban me, YouTube. Hmm. Not too tight, is it? It was tight, but not tight enough to complain about it. I can immediately see my veins expanding through my skin, although I could tell without even looking. Let me let me see if I can change my position so you guys can see so you guys can see the CG better. Hold on a moment. Let me see if I can there we go. There we go. Now, now I'm just an omni, omni, now, how do I say it? Omnipotent onlooker. Get going, boys. Good job, Pains. Maybe we can get through this without causing Seiji too much trouble. Ugh. Ah, I know that stuff. It stings. The antiseptic stings. Seiji wiped the inside of my arm with a clear antiseptic solution. He was pressing pretty firmly, and I could smell the alcohol wafting off my skin. What is this sound effect? Listen to the sound effect. Listen to it. Listen to that sound effect. That is the same sound effect they used during the, you know, the, the, those scenes, those adult scenes. You know, you don't really have to be that thorough. Of course you do. He's stabbing into your vein, you idiot. Oh, my God. Daichi. I'm being thorough because it's your body. That's really sweet and, and also really gay. He has such a serious... Oh, I want to make this clear. When I say gay, I do not mean in a derogatory word. I'm just saying it seems very homoerotic of them to constantly fiddle with each other's bodies, okay? Rest assured, this is a very positive, welcoming place here. Ahem, I, I totally lost track. He has such a serious look in his eyes. Seiji was always a pretty sober guy, but I've never seen him like this. Don't you mean somber? Don't you mean a pretty somber guy, not sober? Somber? No, oh, whatever. It really wasn't the time to be cracking jokes. He tossed the antiseptic pad into the trash and picked up a large implement. What is that large implement you have, Seiji? Nani kana? Gono oki mono wa nani kana? They're just, oh my, these innuendos, these innuendos. The sight of it turned my stomach a bit. 
There was a clear bag on the end of the tube. It was still empty and massive. What else is massive? Okay, I'm sorry. I'll keep going. Actually, that's bigger than a half liter bottle. Scary. On the other end of the tube was a needle. Uh, uh, it sounds horrible. It had a protective plastic cap over the top of it. Ah! Oh, oh God, you can see the needle going in. Why, why does this bother me? Sagey carefully removed the plastic cap and looked me square in the eye. Look how horrific this looks. Oh my god. Ah! Ah, look at his face. Look at his face. Look how cute his face is. Okay. Serious. We gotta get the serious tone now. This is a serious scene. I can be serious. I can be serious. I can. I can. I can. It's not like he was gonna cut off my arm or anything. Yet. If this could get... If this could get us one step closer to getting out of here, I could deal with it. But I'm really nervous. I looked away. I could feel him pull the skin of my upper arm taut just above my elbow. And then I felt a sharp pain. I couldn't hold back a grimace. You know, I'm actually really enjoying this. Oof. Oof. You can see the blood. Oof. Oof. He sounded a little panicked. I guess even Seiji can get freaked out sometimes. I don't blame him one bit. I could feel the needle just barely moving. It was a little unsettling. Seiji let out a sigh of relief. Look at those gloves. Look at those gloves. This is definitely like a, a medical fetish. Isn't it? I mean, it sure seems like it. It's categorized amongst the erotic scenes, so probably is. Eh, there was a red bead of blood right where the needle was. Oh. Hold on. YouTube is giving me an error message saying it's not. Is there a lag for you guys, chat? Tell me if there's a lag, okay? Just tell me if there's a lag and I'll continue as is. Okay, just tell me. If there's a lag, you guys, then I can stop and we can continue another day. Well, I'll keep going then. Just let me know, alright? Was that it? Was that all we had to do? Is it over? I'm glad you have such good veins. That must have hurt. No worse than a shot. All right, everyone. Hold on a moment. So YouTube is telling me that I'm actually having a lag and I already got to the part with the blood drawing scene. So I think I'm going to cut it off here, at least in terms of room number nine. If there's another game you guys would like me to play, please let me know. I'm very disappointed I couldn't get Akamanto set up, but I have a number of other games. I have Dramatical Murder, Sweet Pool, Oz Mafia, Flowers, and Aokana. And that's about it. So please let me know if you ever want to see me play a new stream in the future. But thank you so much for hanging in there. You guys hung in there for two hours. Just two hours of listening to me. I really appreciate it. Thank you so very much. Thank you, humans. So, thank you very much for hanging in there and attending my little Halloween party. Boku wa 本当に嬉しいんだよ。
僕は頑張るけど不安になったけど頑張ります I really appreciate it Wait Here we go Now we're nice and cozy at home So anyway Everyone Thank you so much for watching And I cannot wait to see all of you The next time for my debut One last shot of my tail Isn't it cute? Please enjoy your Halloween. Please be careful trick-or-treating out there.